Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Here I have the Electron Vortex Plug, and here I have the Electron Vortex Plus, and I'm gonna explain the differences, and one of these, guess what, is UL2252 certified. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, that's right. I'm here with two different versions of the Lectron Nax to CCS adapter. So this is the Vortex plug. This has been around for a while. People have been using this. You know, a lot of people say they trust it and they use it and that's great. And then here we have the Electron Vortex Plus. This is an updated version. There have been some minor changes. They added an interlock, and most importantly, this is UL2252 certified, meaning that it complies with all of the standards. Now, on the website, they say that this is compliant, but this is actually certified. So this was certified by SGS. I'm gonna be honest, I had never heard of them before. I've usually heard of obviously UL on a writer's laboratory and I've heard of ETL and I've heard of CSA but I've never heard of SGS but it is a reputable, a reputable source. I did look into it a little bit. I'm not sure why they went with SGS over other companies but they did and this is what they have and I, rec I didn't recommend but I said that these were this was a high quality adapter before and now I can say this is certified with the standards. So that's gonna be my official stance. So what I'm gonna do right now is I am actually going to sit down and show you all the specific differences between these two adapters. Uh, upon appearance, they look pretty similar, but there actually have been some changes to, uh, in my opinion, improve the quality of the product. All right, everybody. So I'm gonna show the difference between these two adapters. Now they look extremely similar, but they are a little bit different. So I'm gonna kind of point out all the differences. Uh, first off, from tip to tail, they're pretty much the exact same length, which is interesting. But when you look at them sideways, the new one, this is the Vortex Plus, is the kind of front part here is a little bit shorter, and it just makes it a little bit easier to hold, in my opinion. So hopefully you all can see the difference. Then the next difference you can see right here is the actual trigger to release the NAC side. So this is the old one, the Electron Vortex plug, and it's kind of angled, and it's actually really hard to push down. And that was one of the reasons I really never liked the uh, Vortex, the original Vortex. Whereas here on the Vortex Plus, this button is super easy to push down, like really, really easy to push down. Next, you can actually see a difference on the pin that locks into the port. You can see here, this is a little bit thicker, a little bit more robust, whereas this is a little bit thinner. Now, another difference which I thought was interesting, something they took away, in here you can actually see like an orange rubber gasket, whereas in the Vortex Plus, this does not have that rubber gasket. Aside from that, everything else is the same here, except in the Vortex Plus, you can actually see this little pin right here. I don't know if you can see it but that is the interlock. That's a better angle, you can see it. So essentially, when this gets plugged into your car and you put in the Tesla, the Tesla cannot be removed until this is removed from the car, that interlock is no longer depressed and then you can take out the Tesla. Another difference is actually the material. I'm not exactly sure if it's a different material or just a different coating, but there is definitely a different something going on there. I kind of like the feel, the texture feel of the new one, personally. And then you can actually see the button placement is slightly different, whereas this on the Vortex Plus is slightly, right, I guess, raised or pushed forward a little bit, however you want to say it. Um, I don't know, I, I guess I don't really mind either iteration. Um, it's fine with the look, whichever location. The one thing I did wish, I just, for both of them, I just wish this button was a little bit more raised so you didn't have to push down. Cause what happens is when you push down these little walls here, you kind of push into the walls. Whereas if it was higher, you could push down and make it a little bit easier to use, but not the end of the world. 
And so those are basically the main visual differences between the two adapters, or I guess physical, not just visual differences. And then the other big difference is this adapter is UL2252 certified by SGS. You can see that right here. And I also like how on the new Electron adapter, they clearly show what you can use it for, for DC, whereas you cannot use it for AC. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the certification, but I did mention it here, as far as the differences, the Vortex Plus is UL certified. The Vortex Plug is not. All right, everybody, now that we've checked out the differences between the two adapters, I'm actually gonna show you um, a little bit of what makes this, the Vortex Plus, um, a better option and a, a little bit safer and kind of what Electron is advertising, which makes the, the biggest difference between these two plugs, which is that interlock. So what I'm gonna do now, we're gonna head over to my car and we're gonna plug it in. We're also gonna plug in the old one to show you how the old one used to work and show you how this one works and why they are different. All right, everybody, now I'm gonna show the main difference between the two, which is the interlock. So I showed it a little bit earlier, but here is the OG Vortex plug. It has no interlock in there. And here is the new Vortex Plus, and you can see it has an interlock. So basically when that pin gets pushed in, you cannot remove the NAX from this adapter on this side. So I'm gonna demonstrate that for you all. So I think it's easier to just see things. So here, I've got the Vortex plug, I've got the NAX. Okay, I push the button down, get the NAX in, doesn't come out, okay? And I can plug it in here. And then I can just push this bottom button here and I can take the NAX out, okay? Because there's no interlock, which is fine. This is safe, the original is safe. Now, I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna demonstrate the new Vortex Plus. So this interlock was something that Tesla had on their original adapter and um, some automakers like Ford asked for to be on this to be even safer. So um, when I go to push it in here, you can see, there it is, uh, it won't go in. If I put it into the car, I actually wanna check this, I didn't test. Um, Yep, same thing. So when you want to put this on, regardless, you need to push this bot, sorry, there we go. You need to push this bottom button, push it in, pop in the adapter. Now what is a little weird about this adapter, um, and not unsafe, because I'll show you why it's not unsafe, but once you plug it in, you actually can just pull it right out, which honestly, that's probably a good experience for the consumer. But let me show you the magic of this one. So you push the button, put it in, you plug it into the car, and once you plug it into the car, that interlock is being pushed in. And now if I try to pull this out, it won't come out. Okay. And then when I push the button in, I can't even push the button in on the bottom. It will not depress at all. So it is impossible to take this out and I'm pulling very hard. And obviously, you know, you shouldn't do that or attempt to do that. And now I take this out of the car, boom shakalaka, and now comes right out. So really nice implementation. And that is kind of the whole, well, not the whole, but one of the main purposes of this adapter is having that interlock to make it even safer. All right, everybody, Future Tyler here. I've been using the, the Electron Vortex Plus. I've really been enjoying it. And um, something I thought was weird, but now I actually think is a good feature was the fact that when you plug it into the adapter, but you don't plug it into the car, you can pull it right out. I actually like it. So this is why. So you unplug it from the car and then I just grab it and it comes right out, which is really nice. Whereas before in with some other brands, I have to push the button and then take it out. So this, uh, what I thought was weird is actually a positive feature. And like I showed before, when the interlock is pushed down, like you can't take it out. But when you go to unplug it, boom, shakalaka, you're good to go. So really, really digging this and enjoying using this on the road and on this road trip I'm on right now. Now what I wanna do is I wanna talk about something I find kind of interesting about this product. So this is rated at 500 amps and 1,000 volts. It says it right here on the bottom. Additionally, I do wanna mention this. It is IP67 rated, so this is pretty much as, as, as waterproof and weatherproof as you can get, which is really wonderful. But anyways, this is, 500 amp, 1000 volt 
rate it. And it actually says maximum, which I think is interesting. The UL225 standard says that the test is supposed to be performed on an air-cooled cable. Essentially, with the air-cooled cable, things are going to heat up faster, okay? Uh, and essentially, you know, when they're tested, people were thinking that this wasn't going to be able to be rated at 500 amps, 1,000 volt. And this is being advertised as that. I just thought it was really interesting. I do want to mention too, because I don't want people to like be worried or anything, that these, when they're being used with liquid cool cables, like which are in these Tesla superchargers behind me, the V3, and additionally at like pretty much every other, like Electrify America, IANA, BP Pulse, all those chargers, uh, they're liquid cooled. This is going to be perfectly fine, uh, perfectly safe, and if, say, it were to warm up too much, it would derate automatically, or it also has... Um, uh, like if it got, if it was way too hot, it would just completely cut off altogether. So perfectly safe. I just thought it was interesting. I did want to mention it because there was a lot of speculation that some of these adapters weren't actually going to get going to get rated at 500 amp, 1,000 volt, uh, and that's that. All right, everybody, now it's time to give my final thoughts and recommendations for the Electron Vortex Plus. Uh, first off, I think all the changes were great. I think it makes it easier to use. It's a little bit easier to hold in the hand. This button being completely changed and being really easy to use is nice. Uh, this, this is fine. Like I said, I wish this was like a little bump bigger so my finger when I pushed in didn't push up against here. Not a big deal. I like how they made this a little bit more robust. And I mean, the fact that it is certified. And since it is UL225, 2252 certified, I can recommend this for you to use. Now, as always, I'm going to say, if you're a little bit nervous about warranty or anything like that, to use the adapter that is recommended by your um, manufacturer of your vehicle. But I do want to say that a lot of the manufacturers, including Ford and even GM, I'm pretty sure GM now is using this. I know Volkswagen is going to be using um, uh, something similar to this and let me specify that I think the Ford ones are slightly different, but this is really close now They've adjusted it a little bit But a lot of audio manufacturers are already using the Electron So it might be a little bit more affordable to buy it from Electron. I believe they sell this on Amazon uh, I'll put a link, uh, a link down below for anything um, you can use there to go ahead and get this but yeah, I think that this is um, a great adapter, much improved, and something that I could highly recommend for you to use. There are going to be some other adapters coming to market eventually, but right now, this is the only UL2252 certified NAX, the CCS1 adapter in the United States. So thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, please remember to give a like, a subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will catch you all next time.